Ladies and most gentlemen, today we're going to talk about mounts. Now not just any mounts, we're going to talk about the mounts that Blizzard put time and effort into but never released to players. Now the mounts on this list are not available in game as of patch 7.1.5 of Legion, but if you're watching this in 2018 and all these mounts are in game, how are they? Now Blizzard has a long track record of making things that don't make it into the game. In fact, there's about 230 mount models which are currently not available. The reason this list isn't top 230 unused mount models in WoW is because most of them are boring recolors or are just plain uninteresting. So without further ado, these are, in no particular order, my top 5 unused mount models in World of Warcraft. So first up is the Iron Horde Wolf. Now this mount has been in the game since patch 6.2 of Warlords of Draenor. And honestly, it's probably one of the best things to come out of that expansion, apart from a ton of people saving money on sub fees. <laughs> this model was used in game, however. It's an NPC on the west side of the Tanan jungle. This amazing wolf may not be available as a mount, but hunters can now tame it as a pet. So if you're a hunter, you can now have the pleasure of seeing this badass wolf on a daily basis. This mount's style of armor was used on two mounts which did make it into the expansion. They're the Armored Iron Tusk, and an Iron Hoof Destroyer, which is a cleft tooth, which is armoured to the teeth. Having a go on this mount in game just made me sad that it was never implemented. The size of the mount actually makes it look like you're travelling a lot faster than you are, and the running animation is just so damn epic. As of right now, I do not see this mount being implemented into the game through the current story arc, but I guess that doesn't stop them throwing it on the in-game shop, or maybe adding it as a reward from a legacy achievement. So this mount is known as the Green Flame Talon, and is a recolor of the Flame Talon of Alice Razor from the Firelands Raid. This mount also has a purple model, which was used in Wall of Draenor for the mount the Void Talon of the Dark Star. Now for some reason, this mount doesn't translate very well on Model Viewer. I think it's something to do with the particle effects on the wings, but luckily, I'm a big time private server genius, and I was able to change the model in game. But before I worked it all out, I did try and port the model over to Wrath, but that didn't work out so well. So in the end, I used a Missa Pandaria client, and it worked a charm. So here it is. Now this model just looks amazing in game, and it's such a damn shame that they never used it. But, as this mount is green, and Legion is a very green expansion, I wouldn't give up hope just yet. There might just be a need to ride a green fiery bird in Argos. So way back in the Burning Crusade, Blizzard released the mount, the Ashes of Alar, and even today, this mount is considered one of the best in game. Then in Cataclysm, Blizzard added a recolor known as the Dark Phoenix, but what they didn't tell you is when they added that model, they also released a reskin for it, known simply as the Spectral Phoenix. Now this reskin is quite subtle and is definitely worthy of this list. As you can see, the Dark Phoenix is a dark purple color. Comparatively, the Spectral Phoenix is a much lighter shade of purple, and of course, as the name suggests, is spectral. In relation to releasing this mount in game, this mount's time has probably passed, as much higher res phoenix mounts have been released since this one, and it's yet to show its face in game, but even if it's not up to today's standards of graphics, I still think it'd be a great addition to the mount collection, as you can never have enough phoenix mounts. So this is the Stormcrow mount, and this was added to the game files in Mr. Pandaria. Now the interesting thing about this mount is that not only was the model added to the game, but the item to learn the mount was also created, even with its own unique icon. Now original speculation on this mount was that it was linked to the Isle of Thunder area in Pandaria, but obviously that never happened. Another theory suggests that it could be linked with Blizzard's MOBA Heroes of the Storm, due to its name. Now in game, this mount looks great, the mount's special animation is also pretty impressive. Out of all the mounts on this list, my guess is that this mount will be implemented into the game sooner rather than later, as everything is there for it, it's just a simple case of Blizzard pulling the trigger on it. But with 7.2 coming up, it seems they may have reused this model partially to create the Rogue's Class mount. And finally, we have the Red Halfsteed. Now this mount is an unused recolor of the Blue Halfsteed mount, which is an achievement award from a Hearthstone promotion they've been running since Missa Pandaria. Now this red version of the mount was added to the game at the exact same time as the blue one. My best guess is that Blizzard potentially have plans to implement a Horde and Alliance version of this mount, hence the red and blue but scrapped it for some unknown reason. Another theory suggests that this mount could be used in a future promotion for an upcoming Diablo expansion, but this is all speculation. There's also a very similar mount which was added to the game in Walls of Draenor, called the Cindermane Charger, and this was a reward from a Recruit of Friends system, so with the release of this mount, I feel like Blizzard probably won't feel the need to release this red half-steed to the masses, which is a shame. I think one of the best ways they could have implemented this mount is simply making the player make a choice of whether they'd like the blue or the red version as their reward for playing Hearthstone. So that's my list. Did I miss any out that you think are worthy of the list? Leave a comment down below. 
and also let me know which model you'd like to see implemented in the game the most. I for one would love to see all these models implemented in the game in some form or another, as it just feels like a waste on Blizzard's part for spending time creating them. I'd also like to give a huge shout out to the website Warcraft Mounts, which helped me gather information for this video. So leave a like if you liked the video, and subscribe if you haven't already, and with that, I'll see you next time.